Hey, welcome back to the Villa Basement. I want you to go ahead and hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you like the content put out, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you want to know when I send out new videos, go ahead and ring that bell so you get notified. Last but not least, I want you to stay in touch. So, um, where we're at. So, I'm actually going to be reversing a little bit and going back to the afterburner. I'm going to wire that up. I'm at the point where it needs to go on my printer in order to put my... Uh, my drag chains on uh, and rub my wiring and get proper lengths on all my wires before I build them um, So I've already started putting on some of the connectors um, They are uh, let's see microfit threes. I believe molexes um, So I'm gonna go a little bit over that right now and um, hopefully join me So What we have is our afterburner it is now currently off the printer um, I'm using these double connectors, uh, that came with the form bot kit. So we can get a little bit better on that. So these are Molex connectors that require you to basically crimp on pins onto your wires and insert those pins into a plastic housing, which allows your wiring to made up with other wiring um, like so these do have clips on them um, so they do and they will um, stay nice and tight uh, they will not pull apart on their own now, let's see one thing on the form bot kit on the connectors they do send you they have these silly side lock-ins so you can actually um, have a secondary lock onto those whether that be into something or um to each other uh, i'm not 100 familiar but basically i've been nipping those off because we don't need them and actually let's go let's go like that yep so go ahead and nip one of those off nip the other side off not using them and a lot of them don't, don't even come with them um I will mention I did get my fuses uh, for my last little incident. Um, some of my coworkers who saw or I told about my incident are now referring to me as Sparky, which is nice, right? But um, spare fuses, good to have, right? A little clumsy. Uh, let's see here. So uh, pretty much everything here uses two connection points, uh, your thermistor, um, your your actual um, um, heater for your hot end, and let's see here, your blower fan and your centrifugal or your squirrel fan. Only thing it takes for is your stepper motor is broken into four different wires of four different colors. I've gone ahead and already crimped two pins on there. And I'm going to go ahead and do a couple for you. So the pins that we're using right now are male pins. Yeah, let's see if I can show you those real quick. Uh, basically, just like most things, um, there's a male and a female version of the pin. Uh, the male version is seated into the female version uh, when it is engaged, like so, which gives you a good connection. So these come on a kind of a, um, not, not really a sheet, but a, um, a backplane of metal. I'm just going to use my cutters, and I'm using the flat side of the cutters towards that sheet of metal. Uh, snip it off like that. Go ahead and snip my second one as well. Like so. And once you get to a point where it's kind of difficult to get in there, just go ahead and cut that metal off so you have a nice fresh spot to work with. All right. So for crimpers, um, I have two versions. I have these ratcheting crimpers. They're really nice. Um, but I actually don't like as much. They're a little bit heavy, uh, better for slightly larger wires. And then I have these really cheap iWIS crimpers um, that basically 
we'll do a 28 to 20 gauge uh, or a 0 0.08 to a 0.5 millimeter. Um, I like these a lot. They're easy, they're quick, and uh, they feel good in my hand. So these are the ones I'm using for these small connectors. All right. So when you strip your wires for these, what you want to do is strip about, you know, about an eighth of an inch. And if you're a little bit long, you can always trim it just slightly to where you need it to be. So I usually strip them just slightly long and then cut them back. I come back in, I give them a good twist with my hand like this. Try to bundle those wires up a little bit. And then to crimp, and this might be kind of difficult to see. Let me see if I can fold some of these wires back real quick. Uh, let me see here. Let's see. Make this a little bit neater. And I'm going to bring this actually a little bit closer to me. So I'm not working so far away. I've learned that um, sometimes it's a little bit better to be comfortable, right? So when you're crimping these connectors, what you want to do is basically find the smallest position that your crimp will fit into your, your your crimp end so what you want to do is find that smallest one okay once you do that you flip it around and you make sure it still fits now i like the crimp i don't know if there's anything specific out there as to a reason why to do it a different way but i like the crimp the wire portion of the crimp first and then i follow that up with the actual uh shielding portion of the wire and my reasoning for doing that is control what i mean by that is once you have your wire crimped on there, you know for certain that you have a good mechanical connection by giving it a good little tug before you even crimp on your 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 insulation. Um, if you if you do it the other way around and you give it a tug, you could have a really good crimp on your insulation and maybe not such a great crimp on your actual uh, physical wire. Um, because it would pretty much show the same. I mean, it would, it would be on there pretty good either way, right? Uh, you would be able to pull it off. So that should be pretty good right there. Really hard to show you guys this. Um, so we'll move on to the second one here. And again, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to find the smallest one it goes into. This guy right here. I'm going to spin it around. I'm going to just seat it there like so, just barely. And I'm on the second, the second crimp portion in, not the furthest one out. This one's going to do the wire, not any further in, uh, because then you could actually damage the, the, the socket me mechanism that actually locks uh, your pin into the connector. So I'm going to line up and I'm going to look at the insulation so that it is just barely passing that first crimp point and I'm going to crimp it like so then I come back I'm going to work my way backwards just a little bit and, and sometimes it's actually helpful to come in and close these up ever so slightly for your crimp just make sure that they don't fall out of whack and I'm going to put those in and Boom. Like so there's my second crimp. All right. So all four of those are crimped now. And the Formbot kit came with 
uh, the double pin side by each like that. And it came with a quad pin, uh, which are flat like this. Uh, I could use those and I'm sure they'd work very well. Uh, but I did order and obtain some quads that are some four pins that are uh, stacked. So basically a two by two. Um, I believe this can take up a little bit less room, might be a little bit less clunky. Well, at least that's my hope. So I'm going to utilize these um, to do what I need to do. And I picked these up right on, um, you, know, you can get them anywhere. You can get them AliExpress, Amazon, wherever. Uh, so when you insert these, what you want to do is find out they're only going to go in one way and sometimes this can be a little bit of a pain is to find out which way they go in and still have trouble there let's see Maybe this is the right way. Maybe that pin's a little crushed. Let's see. All right, this is red. We're going to put red over on this end. Yep, right in. It makes a little click. So that right there, you'll you'll hear when it seats that it kind of makes a little tiny click. And if you look inside of it, you'll have your metallic pin. Um, it will be back. Oh, maybe like two millimeters from the end. So, let's do the second one here. That one. There we go. That one clicked as well. That one's in. So there we go. And then put the black underneath the red. And in actuality, there's no there's no particular way that you need to do these. Um, all that matters is basically that they all get in there, and that the wiring that comes out the other side matches the wiring that you have on this side, meaning you know where your 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 positive, your negatives, and your um, your your uh, pulses are going to come from to, to run these motors. So there we go. All four wires are in into that connector. So we have four on there. So at this point, everything's connectorized like so. And we have a part that we can actually mount on the printer. Okay. So that being said, get over here. And actually, I'm gonna show you my little excuse while we're at it here on why I'm a little late putting out a video if anybody cares. See here. That reason is Q puppy time. So family got a puppy and didn't take up a little bit of time there doing kitchen mark remodel and other things too. So I figured I'd show everybody. everybody likes puppy, right? So all right, back to the drawing board here. So drag chains on the printer. There's the printer. A few pieces of wire there. So let's talk about drag chain train. Ugh, can't talk. Let's talk about drag chains on the printer. Um, and let's see here. I don't really need. I go with that. There we go. All right. So you have three drag chains on your Voron printer. Um, and let me see if I can bring those up in the manual for you guys as well. Let's see here. So the first thing I'll mention is the drag chains that you're going to get from a form bot kit and probably um, most any kit 
aren't going to be the highest quality drag chains, but they will be workable for you. Um, that being said, there's a couple things that I will note to you. So, number one, these will have three holes on the ends. The good drag chains have two, and they run parallel to each other. Um, so I'll kind of show that a little bit better right there. So three. Um, number two, you will have to adjust the length of your drag chains. Um, luckily, they give you a little bit extra, not a little bit too much. Um, but I did have to take a couple links off of each the X and Y axis. Put these together and the way that you remove a link from a drag cha uh, chain it's pretty simple i mean they're made of plastic you basically give it a slight twist while you lift up one side and you can pull out one or multiple units um, these have a slight bevel on them so they kind of go in a little bit easier than they come out so to put them back in what i like to do is kind of put one side in first and then lift and slide in the other side so you get both at the same time now one other thing to note on these um, is these pieces right here these are your openings for your drag chain and for some reason these aren't liking me right now it's a little bit easier with a screwdriver, but basically you open up one side of these. The other side is kind of hinged and that hinging mechanism allows you to basically open it up, install your wiring inside of it, uh, where it can stay protected and all together um, where it needs to be. So, okay, X and Y. So your X and Y drag chains, you have the one up here, which is going to connect um, basically to your uh, your gantry using a T-nut and an M3. And let me see if it shows that in the manual. Uh, I will say the manual gets really sparse when you get through this area, uh, especially if you don't have the exact parts they're looking for. Uh, so N3 by 6 is what they're showing. Um, they don't show you anything as to what you're actually connecting to. Um, so I'll, I'm going to go through that real quick. Um, and I'm going to give you another couple of quick tips if you do buy a kit as to um, some modifications that you might need. Um, so, T-nut here. Uh, you're only going to get the single, uh, the single center pin or center hole mounted, and that's fine. Uh, if you go through your drag chain holder here, you can get one that has a three hole um, for your print. So you print that with three on there. And the same thing applies to your uh, drag chain holder on your um, afterburner. So you can get one with three on that as well, as opposed to the two. The same thing applies again. And let me see if I can this off real quick there we go to your z or z drag chain holder um, you can print it with two holes and then use an insert with nuts like so uh, and again some m3 screws to, to mount your chain to it or you can print this with three and use threaded inserts in it this basically holds it down here for your Z drag chain. Now, one thing I will say, and let's see here, is on your gantry, on, let's see if I can find a good picture here because I'm going to have trouble showing you on the actual printer at this point, on your gantry right here, this piece on this drive motor. In the Voron STLs, there isn't one that shows for three uh, holes for this type of drag chain. 
Um, it has two, and you're going to use the same situation where you have some M3 nuts that go inside of, um, you know, that little housing and then gets mounted inside of something like that. So there is a modification available, and I'm going to throw it up in my notes on the video uh, that you can print off for that piece. I've gotten to the point where it's not worth tearing things down to swap that out and rebuilding that. So I've gone ahead and where's my drag chain? I've gone ahead and I've drilled out, I've drilled out a third hole on that. So I have two holes represented right there. And the way I did that, the way I got my measurement was basically I mounted to the known hole, which left me in a position for the unknown, and I drilled it through. So I knew that they would be where they needed them to be. So that's how I'm mounting my Z drag chain, basically with the three mount on the bottom and then the two at the top, which is going to look something like this once it's mounted. Okay. Once I get those mounted, including the afterburner, I'm going to be able to run my wiring. Um, I'm going to pull my wiring and I'm going to crimp my ends and then I'm going to lay it in. Oh, one more tip. So on these drag chains, and I don't know if you can see it. Well, I think you see it right here, uh, right here. So on the drag chains, one thing that is kind of a pain uh, is the opening. So one side opens, the other side does not. These chains open on the underside which is not ideal. I mean, it's workable. Uh, the tops do not open, only the underside works. So uh, if you mount your drag chains before putting your wiring in them, that means that you'd have this position in and this positioned and attached to your afterburner. Um, you're not gonna be able to put your wiring in them. So that's why mine are attached. That's why I'm not attaching them right now on video. Uh, let's see here, where else we got? Drag chains. Back to the screen real quick. Ah, uh, see mounting. It's getting real exciting. Um, we're getting down to it. Just the last few things here before we jump in the actual software and the controller board and whatnot. I'm trying to think here. Okay. So another thing. Um, whoop. just to note, uh, going backwards a little bit is when you're building your idlers here make sure you leave them loose uh, these are also your tensioners there's just enough room in there to actually get a screwdriver or a um, uh, drive up there to to use these to tighten it up what i suggest is you leave them loose uh, on your position and then tighten them up you know utilizing the belts to pull them and then you have plenty of room there to deal with uh, anything that Kind of loosens up over time. <sighs> well. All right. Kind of a short video, uh, but I really had to put something out there for you guys. Uh, I really appreciate everybody that's been watching. Uh, going to continue with the build. I really want to do some more, um, but really press for time. I'm going to get the afterburner on this thing. Um, now that we got all the connectors on it, I'm going to... Start to get my harness built. I'll probably talk a little bit about how I did that. And then when I actually mount the harness and mount the drag chains, put another video up for that. Um, so again, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Like the video, um, hit that ring notification and stay in touch. Send me an email, uh, hit me up on Twitter, or just leave me a comment. See you soon.